In the world of organized crime, one name stands out above the rest, Pablo Escobar. Known as the King of Cocaine, Escobar was a ruthless Colombian drug lord who rose to power in the 1980s and became one of the most notorious figures in the history of the drug trade. Born on December 1, 1949, in Rio Negro, Colombia, Pablo Emilio Escobar Gaviria grew up in poverty and turned to a life of crime at a young age. He started off as a petty thief by stealing tombstones and then he moved up to stealing cars. He entered into drug trafficking and he realized soon that there was more money to be made in the drug trade. Escobar was a mastermind and it came to smuggling cocaine into the United States. He built a vast empire that spanned several continents and made billions of dollars in profits. He was one of the world's richest people then. He shipped tons of cocaine to United States by road, air and sea, and he had a submarine for the drug trade. Escobar lived a life of luxury, owning mansions, yachts, and private jets. He was known for his extravagant parties and his generosity to the poor, which earned him a certain level of popularity among the people of Colombia. Pablo Escobar was like a Robin Hood figure to many people in Colombia. He provided jobs and money to the poor, and they saw him as a hero. But at the same time, he was a ruthless criminal who killed anyone who got in his way. He was responsible for the death of over 10,000 people, including politicians, judges, and police officers. Escobar's reign of terror was marked by brutal violence and intimidation. He used his private army, known as the Medellin Cartel, to enforce his control over the cocaine trade and eliminate his rivals. The streets of Colombia ran red with blood as Escobar waged war against his enemies. Escobar's famous quote was said to be, take the money or the bullet. Escobar was a formidable foe for law enforcement. He was able to bribe corrupt officials and politicians, and he had an army of loyal followers who would do anything for him. But the Colombian government was determined to bring him to justice and the United States came forward to extend all the support. The Colombian government commissioned a special force of 1,000 elite police personnel to catch Escobar dead or alive and also announced bounty for the informers. The United States provided an airplane with state-of-art equipment that can intercept communication from any device and track the location. The special force conducted a relentless campaign to dismantle his empire and capture him, no matter the cost. Escobar was on the run for over 16 months and he slipped between the fingers on many occasions as he had a fair degree of support from the general public. In 1993, Escobar was finally tracked down and killed by Colombian police and it was the biggest ever manhunt in the human history. His death marked the end of an era in the drug trade but his legacy lives on to this day. Escobar was quite attached to his wife Maria Victoria and children Juan Pablo and Manuela. The family moved to Argentina after Escobar's death and began a new life, changing even their names. Escobar's son Juan Pablo is now Sebastian Merican, a successful designer in Argentina. It's not known as what had happened to Escobar's billions of dollars and it continues to be mystery till date. 
Escobar perhaps took many of his secrets along with him to the grave. Pablo Escobar's grave in Medellin is a popular tourist attraction, drawing visitors from around the world who are fascinated by his life and legacy. Despite his death, the legend of the King of Cocaine lives on.